Okay, basically all the studio glass furnaces are designed from the inside out. So I'll draw the crucible first in the center here. And the crucible that I'm using is an Ipsen pot. And uh, I don't have it here, so I can't show it, but I have a, a drawing of its dimensions here, which I'll, I'll use to work from in the design. And it's uh, 13 and a quarter inches high by eight and a half wide. So I'll design the sides first. I'll leave about three quarters of an inch of air space. And then the bricks that hold up the elements And then after that, I'll put one inch of uh, fiber blanket, and then I'll put two inches of uh, fiberglass board on the outside. So if I use bricks on their sides, then I'll get four and a half inches there, and three inches there. Now for the bottom, I'll put uh, about an inch of grog underneath the crucible to catch drips and whatnot, and then one inch of uh, fiberboard, one row of um, K23 brick, and then one row of fiberglass insulation for the bottom. So this here, if I use three inch brick instead of the regular two and a half inch brick, and that's one inch, and that's one inch, and the grog is one inch, I've got one, three, that's four, five, I've got six inches in here, I've got the height of the crucible in here which brings me up to 19 and a quarter inches. So that'll be the height of the furnace frame. And this dimension here, if we have three quarters of an inch, four and a half, that's five and a quarter, six, seven, eight and a quarter on either side of the crucible. So if we add eight and a quarter to eight and a half, and the other eight and a quarter for the other side, then we wind up with the width of the furnace frame. So the width is 25 inches, and the height is 19 and a quarter inches. I didn't mention this little space here. I'll put one inch of uh, dense fiber board here to cap off this air space and also to cap off the tops of the bricks and the fiber that's exposed there at the top of the frame. Those are the pieces for the 25 inch square tops and bottoms, and these are the pieces for the legs. I used one and a half inch by one and a half inch angle for the frame, and two inch by two inch for the legs. Now, these are shorter than these because what I've done is, is uh, made them to butt up like that instead of having a 45 degree cut there. And the leg pieces are wide enough to cover this space here. And the leg pieces go 
over the top like this after. Just make sure these corners are square before welding them. It's best just to tack it together first and make sure it's square before running a bead down those, uh, those joints. When both the frames are made, pick the best looking frame, the one that has the, 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 the most even joints on the top surface, and we'll keep it aside for the top. So I usually start with uh, putting two legs down. and putting the top in between the two legs. And putting the bottom in there as well. Might be easier with, uh, with two people or a whole bunch of clamps. <laughs> I have neither there. The other two legs go on top like this. Now I've got to square this whole thing up and tack weld it in position. It's difficult because it has to be squared in, in uh, three dimensions at the same time. I usually use vice grips and clamp a steel square right to the frame and then I can actually use the square as a fastening point to keep it to keep it in position while I'm welding it. So I can just adjust it to exactly how I want it and actually use the square as a as a securing point and then I'll tack it right here. the finished frame all tacked together. Now this basic frame design could be used for any number of pottery kilns or slumping and fusing kilns or top loading annealers. It's a pretty basic design. All right that's what these outside corners look like after the frame's been all welded up. Notice how I haven't welded the top seam. I've just welded the sides. 